Hello, welcome everyone. If you want to let me know in the chat, just confirm that we are live. It appears we are. And I'm going to add in the chat, um, and for those watching the recording, it'll be in the description below, the um, link to the resources that I have for you, which are some questions to ask yourself about um, using AI and whether or not you think you should. Um, as well as some resource articles on that. So let me include that here. All right, so um, I am really excited to talk about this. I will preface this by saying, um, you know, I am not necessarily doing this to condone using AI. Um, I am also not someone who's going to say never, ever use it. Reality is it's already being used by clinicians, by um, clients, um, for therapy and for everything around therapy. So I think it's important that we don't hide our head in the sand and pretend like it doesn't exist and avoid it. Um, and that we kind of tackle it head on and look at how and if we should use it um, and in what circumstances. So that is what we'll be doing today. Uh, yes. And so I originally heard about this because, um, well, I mean, obviously we've all been hearing about like AI and chat GPT. Um, and I was at a conference recently and so many people asked me about it. I had so many different clinicians in all different realms asking me like, what do you think about AI? What do you think about using AI for progress notes? Or I've heard of these people using AI for this different thing. And it's, you know, um, and saying that they really didn't like it. So, um, we are going to dive in. And I also want to say I am just at the very early stages of researching this and kind of learning how people are using it and kind of also forming my own opinion about it. So um, I would not be surprised if six months from now, my opinion is slightly different or my advice is slightly different. And six years from now, it will probably be drastically different. So there's that. Um, but for right now, in this moment, we have what we have. Okay, so let's dig in. I'm gonna pull up my notes here. Um, and the resources document around AI is, um, it's just a list of questions really for considering whether or not to use it. And we'll go through those, but we're also gonna go through more specifics. So um, first of all, what the heck is AI? So AI is basically like it's artificial intelligence, but um, it, it, that term encompasses so many different things. But really in, in the form that we are considering, it's talking about um, an artificial intelligence that is mimicking human communication and interaction in some way. Um, and there you may have clients who are already using it or have used it. I did not realize that so many people were actually using it for therapy, um, which, you know, we can have debate about whether or not that is useful. Reality is people are using it for therapy, meaning they are literally like going to chat GPT or another AI and saying like, you know, I feel, I feel depressed today or I feel sad or I feel anxious. And that AI is then offering them advice or resources. Um, some of those are good and some of those aren't. And, you know, that's that's what's happening right now. There's nothing that we can do about that. People have a right to use that option if they want to. Um, and obviously, that's like there's some benefit to client access there because anybody with an Internet connection can do that. Um, we also want people to follow up and, you know, get real, um, real support. So. Ideally, I would say if we can start to, as mental health professionals, partner with more resources like that to get people hooked up with professionals, that would be awesome. Um, okay, but reality is it is happening as far as like people are using it as a substitute for therapy. Also, um, people are using AI for things like within the mental health field, um, medication monitoring, um, symptoms check-ins. Um, mood monitoring. So a lot of things that actually we use apps for, um, people are also using AI for. Um, so it's not, I would say those type of things feel a little less scary in that we're already used to using technology for those, um, for those type, for that purpose. 
Um, and obviously what you want to consider, like if you're in the U S and regardless, um, is HIPAA and like, and clients privacy, right? So that's what comes up anytime we use any type of technology is how is our clients, uh, privacy protected. So while those services may be useful, a lot of AI stuff is very new. So is it actually better to use an app you were using before instead of using an AI? It might be at this point. Um, so I did want to talk about some things that AI could potentially be useful for. And please, in the chat, if you have questions, feel free to, um, to ask your questions or make your comments as well. Um, so things that I thought I, AI could potentially be useful for, writing blog posts. So if you want to write a blog post on your website that talks about like common symptoms of anxiety, uh, you can type in common symptoms of anxiety blog post and it'll write a pretty awesome blog post for you. Uh, now, anytime you use anything like that, you obviously need to check it. <laughs> so you would use that. I would never recommend you use it and then, um, you know, just post that to your website. You know, then go through, check it, make sure it makes sense, make sure that you agree with what it says, that you agree with the recommendations, add in some personalization. Um, I would say one thing I, I'm a little concerned about with things like this is that, you know, it, it could start spitting out very similar articles for people across the field. And then um, that's going to be bad for your website as far as Google, because Google doesn't like plagiarism. And it's just kind of bad for the public in general. So, you know, do your own fact checking. So all of that kind of relates to this overarching thing with AI, which is it's meant to make your work a little bit easier. It does not mean that you that AI can work for you and re completely replace you. So really, that's why use it as a starter and then personalize that blog post, right? Add in your own tips, add in your own um, like call to action and your own summary at the end. But if you want to use it to create an outline, I mean, I don't see how there could be an issue there. Um, and one thing that I read in some medical articles was that AI was actually a lot better than humans at things like remembering certain terminology <laughs> and using, you know, different like medical terminology, um, which is a little less relevant for us as mental health professionals, but, you know, still, still helpful. Um, let's see. I will say I've heard about AI assisting with diagnosis. Again, AI is only as smart as the information you give it and as the information that it is then um, processing and retrieving, right? So AI is not going to do a differential diagnosis for you in the same way that you will. Um, I would be wary of using it for that. I also think it's one of those things as clinicians, that's a good skill for us to have. So while it could be fun to play around with, I would not recommend, you know, replacing your DSM with AI and relying on that. Frankly, using the DSM is pretty easy. Uh, and so I don't see a reason for using AI to replace diagnosing um, at this point in time. Okay, so AI for progress notes. So how is this working? Um, this is something that I, that is, uh, a couple of companies have reached out to me about this, companies that are trying to create AI systems to write progress notes for you. So the common thing that I have seen um, over a few different systems is basically there's a software platform and it offers usually telehealth type sessions and you log into that platform to do your session. And yes, that platform is listening to your session and kind of recording it and then picking out from what it listens to, what would be in your progress note. So that's kind of how on a like basic technical level, these things are working um, at this point in time. Some of them also do offer an option where you could have like a recording in an office. So if you're not doing a telehealth session, um, it will listen to your session. Obviously for any system, any type of AI to write a note about your session, it needs to know what happened in your session. So that's always going to be inherent as a, um, 
a part of this process. And I think that is likely what makes most of us a little uncomfortable and makes us question whether this is really the best method. Those are good things to doubt and question, right? So um, some of these softwares are HIPAA secure. And so that HIPAA component and the client privacy component is, is kind of irrelevant in that, not irrelevant, but it is um, less so, less concerning because you know that they have invested heavily in making this a secure platform. Um, there are still concerns with that, meaning there are plenty of clients who probably don't want this. There are plenty of clients who aren't going to care, um, frankly, and there does seem to be a generational divide here. I would say even just kind of anecdotally at this conference I attended, there seemed to be a generational divide with a lot of younger clinicians being very excited at this prospect and a lot of older clinicians um, being very worried about it. So take that for what it is, right? Um, within your client population, you're probably going to see similar things where many clients don't care and are totally open to it. And other clients are super wary of it and don't like the idea. So those are all really important things to consider, right? Is it something that you want to try for certain clients? Is it not? Regardless, you need to have your client's consent. And I would recommend explaining to them how this process is different from the notes you normally take. So um, you could explain to them why you want to use this AI, what it does, how that process works, and also explain um, you know, that this system will be listening to your session and then writing a note for you, and that you will always be checking that note and then finalizing it. Um, so that's something that it's, it's, a, it's always gonna be an informed consent issue anytime you use technology um, and anytime you are using technology, like in addition to services you're providing. So that's a really, really important thing to remember. And if your client doesn't want you to use the AI, you know, what is it that you're going to do instead? Um, so that's something to consider. Um, and we have some people who are saying they are older clinicians and very excited about it. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's about the age. Um, but there does tend to be um, within, I would say within therapists, um, we tend to be a somewhat skeptical group and not the most tech savvy group. And so therapists, um, some therapists are excited about it and a lot of therapists are like completely anti. So it is like all within the spectrum. Um, and I will just say like the, you know, students and like really young clinicians, um, that I talked to seem to be the ones who were most excited about it. Um, but that's just my experience at one conference. So some things to keep in mind if you are considering one of these platforms, and I'm not going to link to any of these platforms or like endorse any of them at this point in time. Um, I will say when I first heard about this, I was like, this is a dream. Like this is what I would love to be able to do for people. Um, but there are just so many things you have to consider with it. So some other considerations are um, any platform, any technology you use is only as HIPAA secure or, you know, as like secure in the technology as you are. So if you are not securing information, for example, if you use a recording, soft, a recording software to record a session and then upload it to the AI, how is that process happening? What are you using to record um, in that circumstance? That may not be HIPAA secure right? Or maybe it is HIPAA secure, but then you leave access open and other people can easily access that. So is that HIPAA secure, right? So those are all things that you want to consider anytime you use any technology. And then um, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, remember that a lot of like chatbot data is still really based on white males. And so even as your clients talk about different things, the AI may not have learned certain things that your specific clients might be talking about, and it may not know how to interpret that. Along with that, um, anytime you have any automated system of any kind, you always have to check it. So someone just said, you know, actually, like this might actually help me get my notes done. Yes. One of my favorite things is any note is better than no note. So if you are the type of person where it's really a struggle to get your notes done and they just don't get done a lot of the time, 
this is also a reality. Um, maybe AI makes those notes get done, right? Um, however, you're still going to need some time. It's not like you can just use the AI and then just check it off. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever had, for example, um, like requested your medical records and there was a physician who was using transcribing and you read your medical record and it's like gibberish words that make no sense. And it's not because they are technical medical terms. It's because the automated transcribing service didn't interpret what they said correctly. And then no one fact checked it or corrected it. And so now my medical record has a bunch of stuff that doesn't even make sense in it. Right. So that can happen with your progress notes if you are trying to use AI for your progress notes. So you absolutely have to go through your note and fact check it, correct errors, um, read it and know that it is saying things correctly and summarizing the important things. Read it to say to see if um, what's in the note is appropriate. So one common thing that comes up when people ask me, you know, how much is too much in a progress note and how do I know what's right? So if we think about the topic of sexual abuse, well, you might have a, a, um, a session where someone is describing in detail, um, you know, the sexual abuse incident that occurred or one of the sexual abuse incidents that occurred for them. And you don't want the AI capturing every little detail. That's where you can simply in a note, you would say that, you know, the client discussed um, sexual assault. And that's it. You don't need to go into other detail because any clinician um, from a mental health level, that's that's about as much information as they need. And there's really no reason to add in all the gory details about what happened to someone in your progress note. So, um, but if an AI is writing a note based on just listening to the session, it's going to add in all kinds of stuff. So you're going to have to go through and just delete a lot, right? So those are just things to consider um, because I think a lot of people are hoping it will save them time and um, be this magic bullet. And the thing is, you're still going to have to go through and edit that note. It's not going to write a better note than you. If you have had good training in writing progress notes, AI will not write a better note. Um, it will do it automatically, but it's not necessarily going to be better. I promise you. So, um, so that would be like the biggest concern. Um, as well as just going through and maybe taking out, you know, when clients talk to us, they're using like their sibling's name, their spouse's name. And so you'd go through and take out um, names of other people that are involved. Um, you will also want to consider insurance if you're here in the U.S. So did the AI pick out a progress statement for that client? Because in insurance, you want to have a progress statement that clearly identifies that the client has made some progress towards their goals and continues to have a, a need for therapy um, because they haven't fully met their goals. So you might still have to add that in, right? So these are just things to consider um, with AI. And some of these um, systems that are specific to mental health professionals are making those considerations and are trying to um, teach the AI to do that. And I think that's something that's probably possible. So again, that might be something that's a non-issue six months from now, um, six years from now, who knows. Um, also, there are ways to get around that by specifically asking the client that. And so then that's something that the AI will clearly want to write down. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's just remembering that for this to work, an AI system is listening to your entire session with a client and then summarizing it for you. So um, even if you log into a secure platform to do that, there are things to consider there. Um, there are obviously clients who just won't want you to do that regardless. Um, you also want to make sure that you're aware of what happens to that information. Like, is that data being saved after the session is over? Um, and what happens kind of in between like the session happening and then the note being finalized by you? Um, you also want to think about the logistics of if you're logging into the software to do that, how do you get that note from this AI system to your electronic health record, right? So you're still probably going to have to like copy and paste um, and, and use some kind of method there. Uh, again, for some people, that feels so much easier and you're like, yes, I'm so on board. Let me do it. And for other people going through this list of things 
makes you realize maybe it's actually not really going to save me that much time and not worth the hassle or not worth paying because obviously none of this is free. <laughs> so if you're going to use a HIPAA secure platform uh, and actually, um, you know, do your notes that way, you're going to be paying a monthly fee on top of whatever other electronic health record fee that you are paying. So is it worth um, your money for that? All right. I think that is all that I had as far as considerations. All I'm seeing really in the comments is from people who like it. <laughs> so um, like I said, my opinion is as yet unformed. Um, I am very open to the idea and also skeptical at the same time. Um, and I also think that it probably is the reality of our future. And so within that, um, I'm going to keep researching it and kind of staying on top of it and talking about ways that you could do it safely, because I know that people already are doing it and will continue to do so. Um, so there's no use putting our head in the sand, right? All right. Any questions before we jump off of the live? Um, Angela says, are any EHR platforms incorporating AI at this time? I have not heard of any EHR platforms for mental health professionals that are incorporating AI. I think there is like one or two medical ones, but those, those are very clearly more for like the medical profession. So that kind of tells me that they're also really on board and maybe a little ahead of the game, um, which tends to be the case as far as the medical profession versus mental health specifically. So it's not very surprising. Um, let's see. And someone else said, if nothing else, it's a good way for me to remember what happened in the session. Yep. <laughs> um, it's kind of taking notes for you. Uh, I will say though, you know, keep in mind that like, for example, the progress note template I have and recommend like really takes people less than five minutes to complete. Um, and is very easy to do so and not stressful. So that's why I caution you to question on that resources list. I think one of the first questions I have is, you know, is this something I actually need? So kind of ask yourself, why am I interested in AI? Is it because of a time management issue? Um, and I have ADHD and it's a real struggle for me to get it done. And so like, this is the best way for me to get it done during the session. Or is it um, uh, a question of constantly being worried about your notes and over analyzing things and rewriting things and worrying about what type of content is in the notes, that probably will not be solved by using an AI. I would recommend instead getting some kind of training, um, getting my progress note template, you know, all of that stuff will be much more helpful for you and make you feel more confident overall than using an AI. And I promise you, your note will be just as good. Um, Let's see, do I have recommendations for you to explore? I would say, I'm, I don't want to like name any names at this point. So if you just Google um, AI for progress notes, you will see a few pop up and you can kind of make your own determination. As with an EHR, I would always say, um, try out a couple things, right? So there are two I know of offhand that are specifically for mental health professionals. Uh, try it out and see what you think, right? Um, try it out without your clients. First, <laughs> um, use that resource sheet to answer questions about, you know, whether or not you feel like it's doing its due diligence. You've talked with your clients about it. You feel comfortable with it and good about it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I would I would say at this point. I'll recommend you Google <laughs> um, and, and you'll find them. They'll pop up. All right. I don't think we have any other questions. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, new frontier and exciting stuff. And hopefully we all learn to use this, but without, um, without foregoing training that we might um, find to actually be more helpful overall and might be needed. Because um, you still have to know what needs to be in your progress note and what constitutes a good note, even if someone else writes it for you, right? You still to sign off on it, need that. So let's see, somebody else said, do therapists feel that people would prefer AI to rather listen to their problems instead? I think there could be people, yeah, who are a little embarrassed. Like if we're talking about like AI as a therapy session, um, 
I could, I could totally see that, that there are certain people who like, that would be their first step into therapy would be talking to AI and feeling like, okay, at least nobody knows this secret thought that I'm having. And I could see that actually being helpful in getting someone feeling comfortable talking about something and then working towards that. Um, but like I said, obviously I would hope, I would hope that a lot of us in the mental health profession actually jump on board and get involved in this process so that um, we can do things like provide really good resources for people like that who might be using AI, um, people who are seeking it as a mental health treatment. Um, and that way we'd be able to, um, to better help people in the long run, right? And, and use it as a way to increase access rather than um, trying to avoid it and stifle it when it's, it's happening, people, it's here. <laughs> um, and I don't think anyone has started research in this area, Gloria, um, around progress notes and effectiveness. I think these newer programs that are starting up are trying to do some research around it because they want to be able to show that it's effective and that it's ethical. And they are being mindful of ethical concerns and of HIPAA and all that. So um, I think they do have good intentions um, in that way. And I think the more of us that can offer them feedback as this is a new process, um, the better off we will all be, the better off our clients will be. So yeah, actually ask them like, and if you're in, someone who's interested in research, this is a great thing I think to start off with. Um, that's kind of a, brand new. All right. So we're going to finish up. Um, if you're watching the recording, Click the link below in the description to check out the resource list um, and let us know in the comments. What do you think about it? What other questions do you have about AI? What resources do you have? Um, you know, all thoughts are welcome. There's no, it's all bad or all good. Um, it's really like any other ethical thing, something that we have to weigh options and make decisions about. So all of those are welcome. All right, everyone. Um, tune in next week for next week's video. We'll see you then. Bye and happy writing. <laughs>